Test. My name is Paulina Lipiec and welcome to Polski Daily Grammar Class. In today's lesson, we're going to learn about miejscownik, locative case. I know some of you really hate it and I understand why. There are so many endings to miejscownik and so many rules you have to remember. I always tell my students, it's useful to learn the rules, to read the rules and just go through the class, but later you may just try to feel the pattern, read a lot of texts, sometimes highlight uh, the loc locative forms and try to feel them. Otherwise, there will be too many rules to memorize. And today I'm going to show you the patterns. We're going to start with something very easy and then we'll go to a little bit more complicated forms of Mesovnik. Are you ready? Let's get started. Okay, so now I can answer one of the easiest questions you can ask me today. When do we use locative case? There are five propositions which will be followed by locative forms of nouns and adjectives. And they are pretty easy. You will not use locative in any other situations. No other rules to remember, just these five propositions. And they are na, on, at, on top. So when you have a flat surface and something is on top of it, you say na. When you're at some event, you say na. And when you're in an open space, like a beach, then you also would say na. And on some, on the islands. Here we have two examples, pretty simple examples. Jestem na dachu. Jestem na dachu. I'm on the roof. Tańczyłem do rana na weselu. Tańczyłem do rana na weselu. I was dancing at the wedding party, wedding reception, until in the morning. And the second preposition is w, in, inside. Ola jest w mieście. Ola jest w mieście. Ola jest in the town. I said in, inside, because it's, it's pretty confusing. When we think about w, we mean that something is closed. When I say town, it's somehow closed with the border. Um, Marek jest w kawiarni. Marek jest w kawiarni. Marek jest in a cafe. The next three um, prepositions are po, meaning after or around. Completely different meanings, but unfortunately, yes. Um, po obiedzie poszliśmy na lody. After the dinner, we went for ice creams. Podróżowałem sam po Polsce. I've been traveling uh, around Poland alone. Podróżowałem sam po Polsce. Um, around, I'm not meaning around the building, but I'm talking about going into different directions, not having just one destination, just jumping across and around and so on. Preposition przy. Przy meaning at, by. I think this one is the most complicated one. Maybe not, depends where you're from. Um, because we have the, the preposition obok, obok, next to, which is when you have two items next to each other, but there's some space in between. But przy meaning something is very close. They're touching, they're somehow integrated. Then we use przy. Uh, we have krzesło stoi przy biurku. Krzesło stoi przy biurku. A chair is standing by the um, desk. Jestem przy tobie. Jestem przy tobie. I'm next to you. I'm by your side. I'm very close to you. Jestem przy tobie. And the last one is o, about. O. Ciągle myślę o wędzonej makreli. I don't know who's writing these stupid examples. Probably me. Uh, ciągle myślę o wędzonej makreli. I keep thinking about the smoke mackerel. So we use locative also with O. And that's it. That, that's the answer to the question, when do we use locative? There's no other situations when you would use locative case. Now we can move to how to use it. Be brave. Okay, so we will start with plural because it's the easiest. Here, you don't have to think about the genders. 
So it doesn't matter if it's masculine, feminine, or neutral. It will be always ich, 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 ich for adjectives and ach for nouns. Nothing will surprise you. I've written a few examples, but the more you use locative, the more you'll rea realize how easy it is and that you don't even have to think about it. Rozmawiamy o mądrych studentach. We are talking about smart students. Jestem na wspaniałych wakacjach. I'm on the great holidays. Myślę o niebieskich migdałach. Literally, it means I'm thinking about blue almonds, but it's, it's a Polish idiomatic expression. It means that I'm daydreaming. Koty lubią spać na ciepłych kaloryferach. Cats like to sleep on warm radiators. Okay, and when we're done with plural, which took us a few seconds, we can talk about adjectives. In singular, um, we have only two slash three endings. For masculine and neutral, it will be the same. It will be im or im. So uh, you would use im after hard consonants and you would use im especially after k and g. Um, and for feminine, we will just use a. Nothing else uh, will be different. A, you already know the ending A from genitive case. Feminine adjectives in genitive case also use A. And my examples. Chodzę po dużym zielonym parku. I walk around a big green park. Marzę o wygodnym, przytulnym mieszkaniu. I dream about a comfortable, cozy, Apartment. Oglądam film o znanej piosenkarce. I'm watching a movie about a famous singer. Piosenkarce, that's a singer, feminine singer. That's why we have A here. Okay. And now we can come to nouns. We will have so many slides here, and I really hope that you will not get confused. I prepared a lot of examples and I prepared some exercises, some drill exercises for you. So stay with me, um, maybe have a piece of paper. You will be able to pause as usually and um, write the correct forms of words. We'll start with some rules and then examples and then the exercise for each rule. So in the first group, it doesn't matter if your word is masculine, neutral, or feminine, okay? So the gender doesn't matter. If the last consonant of the stem is either b, p, v, f, z, s, m, n, so all of them are very basic letters, you know them, they are in most alphabets, at least in, in the European languages, nothing special about them. Then we just e add ye, i, e. In English or in Polish, e, e. Um, one information that you may need, one piece of information, uh, is that the last consonant, it's not the last letter of the word. Because if you have a neutral or feminine noun, the last letters will be vowels. We're talking about consonants, okay? Not the gender ending. The ending of the stem, the last consonant. So, for example, we have pub. Zwykle spotykam się z przyjaciółmi w pubie. I usually meet my friends in a pub. See, nothing changed here. We just added je to b, pubie. Grupa. This is the last consonant. Not a, p is the last consonant. Widziałam twój post na grupie. I saw your post in a group. Warszawa. Jak długo już mieszkasz w Warszawie? For how long have you been living in Warsaw? Żyrafa. Oglądamy film animowany o żyrafie. We are watching an animated movie about the giraffe. Koza. Goat. Nie mogę zapomnieć o tamtej kozie. I can't forget about that goat. Taras. Siedzimy i pijemy piwo na tarasie. Uh, we are sitting and drinking beer in the terrace. Kino. 
Byliśmy wczoraj w kinie. We went yesterday to a, mo- to a movies, to a cinema. But we said, uh, I said, byliśmy, we were, we were yesterday uh, in a cinema. That's the correct translation. Okay, and that's your exercise. Um, you can pause me now. You can just copy, write your forms. It shouldn't take you too much time because all of these words have this very basic last consonant. So you're, you're just adding yeah. Here you have the answers. You can check it out. And we're moving to another rule. You may have noticed that in the first list of consonants, we didn't have any T or D or in Polish T or D. Because whenever you encounter such a consonant, you have to stop and think because they will change. T will change to T. And then you add Y. And D changes to Z. And then you add Y again. It somehow softens the word, at least to my ears. I don't know if you hear it as well. We'll see. Maybe it sounds the same for you. So we have the very basic word tata. Już dawno nie rozmawialiśmy o tacie. We haven't been talking about our dad for a long time. Tata changes to tacie. tacie. Does it sound softer? You tell me. Ogród. Ogród, a garden. Lubię pracować w ogrodzie. Lubię pracować w ogrodzie. I like working in a garden. You may notice that something else changed. We didn't only change D to G and added Y, but we also removed the dash from above U. It's very common because if you add another syllable to a word ended in U plus a consonant, it somehow stretches and U becomes O. Another example, another example would be samochód, samochodzie. Okay, let's move on. Um, that's your exercise for this rule. Um, there are some words where you will have to change the U, but pause if you need. Here you have the answers. And we move on. Our third rule about singular nouns. We are still in the category of Mm, gender doesn't matter, okay? We still have masculine, neutral, and feminine. The same rule for all. If the last letter of the stem, the last consonant of the stem is R, then we need to replace R with Z, and we just add E. This time we're not adding Y, but just E. E disappeared. No need for E. So, for example, we have a word actor, actor. Czytałam w gazecie artykuł o pijanym aktorze. Czytałam w gazecie artykuł o pijanym aktorze. I read an article about a drunk actor in a newspaper. And another very similar rule, when we have the letter W as the last consonant of the stem, and then we have to replace it with L, and again we add just E, only E. For example, stół. Na stole leżą brudne skarpetki. Dirty socks are laying on the table. Again, we remove the dash from above. Ooh, we stretched it. Na stole. Your exercise. Take your time. Copy. Check the answers. And let's go to the rule number four. This time, we don't have feminine anymore. We are working only on masculine and neutral. Okay, that's very important. We will have different set of rules for feminine with this particular set of letters. So here we have a very long list. First of all, we have these two problematic or three problem, problematic letters. G, k, h. They always cause some problems in Polish uh, in regards of changing letters, different endings, and so on. You probably already know them. You have to remember about g and k in Polish a lot. Then we have l and j, l, y. We have these five letters. 
and we have a very long line, very, very long row of typically Polish letters. I know there's nothing like typically Polish letters. There's no grammar category like that. But if you look at them, they're either these double letters, dz, tz, uh, dz, zh, sh, sh, g, uh, or they're typ typical sounds like tz, zh, or um, they are softened. They are ch, g, sh, ni. You won't find them in most of the languages. So that's why I call them typically Polish sounds. So if your last letter of the stem is one of these, you add U at the end. And the good information is there's no alternation. You don't have to replace one letter with another like we did with T, D, R, W. You just simply add U. And sometimes, like in my first example, you will have to stretch U and replace it with O. That's a very general rule. So the first example is wróg, enemy. Nie chcę rozmawiać o moim wrogu. Nie chcę rozmawiać o moim wrogu. I don't want to talk about my enemy. Sok. W soku pływała mucha. A fly was swimming in the juice. Duch. Ten horror jest o duchu. This horror movie is about a ghost. Bal. Kopciuszek zgubił pantofelek na balu. A Cinderella lost her shoe on a ball. I złodziej. Na złodzieju czapka gora. This is a very old idiomatic expression. Uh, it means a hat burns on a thief. It means that when someone did something wrong, it will be visible because not so many people can perfectly lie. And just you can, if you want to, you can remember the whole expression, the whole sentence. Just the verb gora is not in use anymore. It's an archaic word. Um, there are more examples, so I'm just going to read you a lot of examples today. Ksiądz. We are now moving to this typically Polish row. Ksiądz. Książka o księdzu była interesująca. Ooh, that sounds like a really good tongue twister. Książka o księdzu była interesująca. A book about a priest was interesting. Księżyc. A lot of people confuse these two words, ksiądz and księżyc. Twardowski wylądował na księżycu. Twardowski landed on a moon, on the moon. Um, of course, it's not true, but Twardowski was um, a character from a Polish legend, um, legend uh, who traveled to the moon long before the Americans. Malarz. Nagrałam podcast o malarzu. I recorded a podcast about a painter. That's true. Check out my podcast, Polski Daily, wherever you listen to your podcast. There is a podcast about a painter and some writers and a lot of other things about Poland. Bagaż. Maria miała w bagażu kokainę. Maria miała w ba bagażu kokainę. Yes, I wrote it. So Maria had cocaine in her luggage. Kosz. Twoja koszula jest w koszu na pranie. Your shirt is in the laundry basket. Mecz. Nasi piłkarze byli świetni w ostatnim meczu. Nasi piłkarze byli świetni w ostatnim meczu. Our um, footballers were great in the last match. So, and the last set of examples. Śledź. Śledź a herring. Nie wiem, co ci smakuje w śledziu. Nie wiem, co ci smakuje w śledziu. I don't know what you like in herring. Gość. Długo dyskutowaliśmy o naszym gościu. Długo dyskutowaliśmy o naszym gościu. We've been discussing our guest for a long time. Łosoś. Salmon. Po łososiu bolał mnie żołądek. After eating salmon, my stomach hurt. Mieszkanie. This word you know for sure. Mieszkanie. W naszym mieszkaniu nie ma wody. There's no water in our apartment. Uh, you may notice something strange here. Mieszkanie, halo, halo, it's N-I, 
ni, not ni, right? But it doesn't matter because this is the same sound. So if you see an I instead of N with dash, it's the same. If you see S I instead of S with dash, she, it's still the same sound. It's all about orthography. So the way we spell um, the rule is the same. Okay, let's go to the exercise. Here you have two sets of words, change their endings. This one will be very, very, very easy for you because you just add U instead of the ending or you just add U to the word if it's masculine. Your answers. And we go to feminine. <sighs> yes, feminine. We will have three, three difficult rules here. Maybe not so difficult for you. Anyway, I told you already that these letters cause problems. And here we go again. We have problems with k, g, h. K will change to c, and you add e. G will change to z, and you add e. H changes to sh, and you add e again. Completely different letters. I know completely different sounds. But what can we do? We just have to memorize this one. Listen, 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 listen a lot to some podcasts, some videos, and we'll get used to especially the, mo the most common words. Łazienka. Siedzisz w łazience już dwie godziny. Siedzisz w łazience już dwie godziny. You've been sitting in the bathroom for two hours already. Droga. Droga. Jesteśmy w drodze. Będziemy za 15 minut. Jesteśmy w drodze. Będziemy za 15 minut. We are on our way. We'll be in 15 minutes. So droga normally means road, but the expression jesteśmy w drodze means we are on our way. Blacha. Blacha. Na blasze są gorące ciasteczka. Na blasze są gorące ciasteczka. Uh, hot cookies are on the tray. Just like here. That's blacha. There are not so many words, feminine words, which would end in ha. You will see in the next exercise, I managed to find three, but nothing else came to my mind. So you don't have to worry so much about this rule. Worry more about K and G. Your examples, your exercise. And the answers. And let's move on. Oh, now the second rule about feminine. Here we go with a roll of Polish sounds. This time we don't have soft letters here, soft sounds. We only have the, the harsh ones, the rustling ones. Z, 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 and z. This kind of sounds will be followed by letter Y. And the rule is exactly the same as in dopełniacz, genitive case. So you may already know it. We have the word władza, władza power. Politycy marzą o władze. Politicians dream about power. Władzy. Y. Donica, a pot. W tej donicy rośnie palma. W tej donicy rośnie palma. Taca. A tray, not different tray, not, not the bacon tray. Na tacy stoją kieliszki z szampanem. Na tacy stoją kieliszki z szampanem. Um, champagne glasses or glasses with champagne are standing on a tray. Plaża. Ludzie spędzają wakacje na plaży. People spend their holidays on a beach. Kasza. W kaszy jest wiele witamin. There are a lot of vitamins in kasza. Do you know what's kasza? It's different kinds of grains that we love in Poland as our carbs. You can have kasza gryczana, kasza jaglana, kasza manna, um, so many kinds of kasza. They're pretty healthy. Pomarańcza. W tej pomarańczy jest za dużo pestek. There are too many seeds in this orange. 
very small exercise. As you can see, how I didn't find so many words that would end with these letters. They just didn't come naturally to my head. I was even reading a book and trying to find some extra words for you, but not so many. Um, there were not so many there. So it's not that common, let's assume. Okay, uh, and I think this, this is the, the last rule for today, the last rule for um, locative nouns. Again, it's the same as in genitive. When you have soft consonants at the end of your stem in feminine nouns, you have to add E. So we have letters G, C, G, C, N, L, and J. Le and yot, they are somehow functionally soft. We consider them also kind of soft. Um, and there's an extra rule here because sometimes we will add e, um, but we, for example, when you have one of the soft consonants with two letters, z, e, z, e, z, e, three letters, z, e, and so on, sometimes you will just keep it like this ni with one e at the end but sometimes you will have to add another e and that's a problem because not even polish people don't know how to do it and the rule is that when it's a polish word and we pronounce it as nya like kuchnia then we leave only one e in locative or in genitive but if it's a foreign word um and the rule is that if it's Polish word. It's a Polish word, and we pronounce it in nominative case as with the ending nia, for example, kuchnia. Then we will just keep one e at the end. But if our word is foreign, for example, Hispania, and we pronounce it uh, with the ending nia, Hispania, Dania, Linia, Mania, then we will have to put two e at the end of this word in genitive and locative. Complicated? It is for us, so don't worry if you make a mistake here. Just, it sounds almost the same. Okay, examples. Kolacja. Po kolacji poszedłem spać. After the dinner, I went to bed. Miłość. Love. Zofia marzy o miłości. Zofia dreams about love. Restauracja. W restauracji było wielu ludzi. There were a lot of people in the restaurant. Kuchnia. W kuchni jest gorąco. It's hot in the kitchen. Hiszpania. Spędzamy wakacje w Hiszpanii. We spend our holidays in Spain. As you notice, I put a lot of holidays in my examples. It means that even though I've been to holidays this year, I still need some. Maybe. Maybe not. Here, Exercise, the last exercise, the answers. And at the end, I have some exceptions and alternations for you. These three exceptions are, I think, the most common ones when you use a wrong, wrong, different ending than according to the rules. Um, probably because these words are very hard, they just got stuck in the language, and that's how we speak. Bóg Bogu, syn synu, dom domu. These are the locative forms. Um, I put a few alternations, the words that change a little bit more than they should on the right side. So we have kościół, church, kościele, w kościele. We changed u to e. Miasto, mieście, w mieście. Obiad, obiedzie. Sto, stole, as I told you before, whenever you see U as the last vowel and you put another vowel at the end of the word, uh, remove the dash and read it as O. Lato, lecce, las, lesie, wiatr, wietrze, światło, świetle, it means light, światło, świetle, mąż, mężu, and maybe wąż a snake, venge. And that's it in this lesson. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something about locative case. 
and Polish grammar will not be that scary for you anymore. If you would like to practice more, go to www.polskidaily.eu. You will find more exercises about locative there. I'll put um, some links in the description of this video, of course. And um, don't forget to leave me a thumb up. Thank you very much.